we got a request from only the strong wanted to know in detail how we go about hooking up camp liberty which is our uh, solitude xl model sheep camp from peak mountain camps i think that's a great uh, question and great request and um, i think it'll be very useful for anybody that's buying a camp just to see how we go about doing it so this is uh we're here to pick up liberty we're going to take liberty out to the ranch and when you come inside you'll see how it kind of looks um, when we put it all away we open up all the cupboards we plug in the dehumidifier we open the refrigerator um, we just kind of leave everything open so that it gets lots of airflow we don't have any mold moisture whatever since it's in here in our storage unit i'm just going to shut the bathroom up so we can haul it on down the road Unplug the dehumidifier and we'll put it away. It's nice and toasty, so it's perfect. Love that. Put that away in just a second. Unplug my wonderful Swiffer air purifier. Put that away before we head on down the road. Shut all the rest of the cupboards. Make sure everything's pretty well secure. to raise the camp up and the retract button actually lowers the camp. Okay, so our hitch right now, you can see it's like laying on the ground um, because when we take it off the truck, we just kind of set it here so that it's really easy to deploy again when we're ready to hook it back up to the hitch. And we also have our rock tamers, which really help cut down on the amount of rocks that go to the front of the camp. So we're gonna install the hitch. Next step is we take this locking hitch pin. I like a locking hitch pin just so I know my hitch is safe and secure when we're out driving around and we don't have Camp Liberty hooked up to her. And this just works pretty simple. You just put the key in and spin this and it comes undone. Then while I'm back here, I'll hook the uh, rock tamer lights up. So we got the accessory package for these rock tamers which have um, LED light strips that uh, put on your brake lights, your running lights, and your turn signal lights. Very helpful. I'm a big fan of Fastway products. This is a Fastway E2 torsion bar weight distribution hit. I also have a Fastway ball cover on, and I use that just so that when we're not hooked up and we've got the hitch on, it just prevents you from getting grease on your clothing if you were to bump up against this. I have a lock on the hitch that takes up any um, wiggle. This really quiets the hitch and also keeps it from moving around while we're on the road. Quick tip is a pair of gloves. I think some of the best gloves to get for this are gonna be at Harbor Freight. They're mechanic gloves. They're um, heavy duty nitrile. Works really well. Let's put this on first. This just comes underneath the hitch ring and then rides out over the top of the draw bar of the hitch and then with a couple of nuts and washers it puts pressure on the receiver and the tow bar and basically just makes it a solid unit and there's no vibration or wiggling and it really makes for a much quieter noise, uh, ride when you're towing. And when you're driving around without the camp on, you don't hear that hitch wiggling in the background making noise. And again, it's one other level of security along with that locking hitch pin. 
makes it really difficult for someone to take this hitch and steal it. I went to Harbor Freight and got a dedicated ratchet and long socket. I got a long socket because the bolt uh, sticks up above the nut. Last thing I like to do is take some Reese ball lube. I believe this is Teflon based and I just put a little smear. Now what Beth is going to do is remove the cotter pin from the lock on the draw bar. We do that on both sides. So we're going to drop our chain so they're ready to hook up on the truck when we back in. We'll do that on both sides and then Beth will remove that hitch pin, lift the latch on the hitch so it's ready to go. You want that in the lock back position so when you drop the hitch on the ball then when you deploy that lock it'll actually hold the ball on the hitch. As I said I'm a big Fastway fan. This is something I've added since we bought the camp. This is the Fastway nylon covered coiled uh, emergency breakaway cable with a nice quick easy carabiner link. When we picked up the camp the breakaway cable was one of those uh, pieces of long aircraft cable with a loop on the end and then you would have to loosen one of the um, D-rings on the truck, uh, loop it over and then close up the D-ring. Not a big deal doing that quite honestly but this is so much quicker just to snap this on and um, the coil keeps it up out of the way so I'm a big fan of that. Another thing that I do with all my trailers and this is not a fast way, this is a, um, another company, but I'm a, in the process of switching this out because I think this is a little stiff. This is a printed, 3D printed plastic uh, seven pin connector, but you want something to cover up that uh, seven pin plug so you don't get moisture or debris in there. And uh, that's probably one of the biggest uh, causes for failure is moisture or debris building up so you don't have a good contact. So every time we unhook, whether we're in camp or we're in storage, I cover that uh, plug with a cap. So as you can see, the hitch is all on. We're ready to back it up. And I've got my little white plastic PVC pipe here. And I'm going to just go ahead and guide David back. Now he has to be able to see me in the mirrors in order for me to guide him back. So um, I kind of have to stand like this and uh, help him back to the truck. We can put this little pin on here. Next step is to grab the breakaway chains. I always put a little twist in them, take up the slack, and then it's just a simple matter of clipping them in. So Beth is going to hook on the breakaway cable, and that just hooks on the truck right beside the breakaway chain. Then the next step is the seven pin connector. Next step is to load up the torsion bars and they clip into the hitch. The trick is to be about 90 degrees to the hitch with the bar low and facing up and it will pivot in and lock in place and then we'll swing it over towards the landing pad for it. Now, in this case, it's not quite um, high enough, so what we'll do is raise up the trailer until we can just like that. And now Beth will drop the retaining link and cutter pin. You can tell she's done this before. And that's it. I'm going to swing around and do the other side. Okay, that's what it looks like. We've got the trailer is hooked up to the weight distribution hitch. We've got our weight distribution bars hooked up. We've got our breakaway chains hooked up. We've got the breakaway cable hooked up. We've got our seven pin cable hooked up. Now what we're going to do is lower the camp. I'm a big fan of the uh, Anderson blocks. They're made out of heavy plastic, lightweight, durable, much easier to manage than a block of wood. And they're made in the United States of America. This is the tongue jack block. 
typically it's going to be slid under the uh, tongue jack in this position so the tongue jack lands on the top there. Occasionally, depending upon the terrain, we don't have enough room to slide this underneath. And what I do is I just slip it under the pad like this and then I drop the pad down on there. It works great. This stows very easily in one of the compartments. This is Beth's backup bar. And then this is our bag with our um, ratchet um, and our uh, ball grease. So keep all that together. So where we're in storage, we will hook the camp up to um, 120 volt, uh, charges the batteries, gives enough power to run the um, air purifier and our dehumidifier. And I do that with just one of these dog bones that converts over from um, 30 amp to uh, 15 amps. Next thing we do is we unhook that and I'll stow the cable. Then we'll just lock up that compartment so we're safe on the road. I stow this dog bone with a couple of other adapters in my electrical box. Now I'm going to coil this up and we'll put that in the electrical box. I think it's always good to have one of these extension cords. We don't use it too much on the road, but if you needed to run a cable for 120 um, AC, this is the way to go. Sometimes we use this on the ranch with the uh, generator. So I just stow this in my electrical box. Next thing we do is we'll remove the wheel chalk. Again, I'm a big fan of fast fastway, and we like this uh, tandem wheel wheel chalk. It's set up so you just slide it in, step on it and locks the wheels in place and then I just flip the cable out of the way. We'll just secure up this door and then all we have to do is close up the back door and then Beth and I will do a light check. Now while Beth gets in the truck and starts up the truck, what I typically do is I will make one loop around the truck and the camp to make sure that we haven't missed anything might seem like a super simple and stupid thing to recommend but trust me at some point you'll make that walk and say oh I'm glad I did that I forgot to close up this cabinet door I forgot to pick up this piece of gear and um, I will say for myself and Beth it has saved us a couple of times well the walk around is complete but I thought I would show you a very common thing to forget and uh, something that will cause a lot of damage to your uh, camp or your RV. And that is to forget to stow your step. Beth and I have uh, had RVs pass us going down the road, fifth wheels and tow behinds. And a couple of times while we've been on the road, we've seen um, that rig pass us or we'll pass them and their step is deployed. And I just shudder to think um, the damage that will be caused if you hit something, um, the damage to your uh, camper RV would be uh, devastating. Uh, very expensive uh, to say the least. All right, so my walk around is complete. I'm now going to do a light check with Beth and then we're on the road with Camp Liberty. We're heading to Mountain View Ranch. I hope you find this useful and helpful. Don't forget to share this with your friends. I'd love it if you give us a thumbs up. Share, comment. We're trying to make the channel grow. Thanks for tagging along. I'm a firm believer in following these uh, protocols. In fact, I have a couple of checklists that I've typed up for departing from storage, departing from a camp, um, and winterizing, which I'll make available for download. But I, you're going to have much less probability of error, mistake, and expense if you develop a just a, a routine, a process, a protocol, whatever you want to call it, so that you always do the same thing, you don't miss anything, you're traveling safe, and you don't cause any damage to your vehicle or your camp. We're going to do the light check, and what we typically do is make sure the lights are working, high beam, low beam, turn signals. I'll go to the midsection, the back of the truck, make sure our turn signals, brake lights, emergency lights are working, and then I do the same thing at the back of the camp. And we're good to go, except we have to carefully pull this rig out of storage and make a very tight turn. I'll show you that. High beam, low beam. Good. 
All right, we'll do the uh, back. That's all working good. You can see our running lights are working. Left, right, brake, and emergency. All right, we are good to go.